What is up, guys? We're Celeste Williams, aka this Wolf Pastor, here to educate you on health and social well being. And today, guys, we're going to be going over why science and your personal experience go hand in hand. They don't oppose each other, it's not choosing one or the other, they go hand in hand. And the reason I want to talk about this, guys, and the reason I'm explaining this is because, as you all may or may not know, um, pretty soon coming up, I'm going to be doing a video over crunches or crunches really dangerous for you because you know there's all this conflicting information out there I'm talking about like you know all this supposed new research saying like oh crunch are actually bad for you they're not a good abdominal exercise they actually don't even build the abs up the way we think you should avoid any type of like you know um, crunch type movement and it's just all this back and forth and I explained how you know I'm going to go into like all the details of it give you guys my feedback on in my opinion based off the collective data not just cherry pick studies not just extreme studies but I realized before I do that you guys need to kind of have an understanding of a few things you have to understand kind of like what a meta-analysis is um you have to understand like you know this whole mindset of oh i go based off personal experience not science why that doesn't really work why it's not even a thing how no matter what you try or do science is involved in some form or another and kind of what brought this about and this is not a bash at all like i enjoyed this conversation a lot but on one of my previous videos a subscriber and i were having you know a back and forth discussion over like touch and go deadlifts versus dead stop deadlifts and what benefits touch and go deadlifts do and don't have and you know the benefits he felt that it had based off his experience versus me telling him well it may have done this for you because you you know we're doing more overall volume but it being touch and go had nothing to do with this benefit because that's just not how it works explaining how biomechanics works the science behind it etc but at one point there was a point where he was kind of saying well basically you know summing it up that he goes based off personal experience more so than just what he reads in an article etc so not bashing, that was a great conversation. It ended up going from YouTube to Instagram so we could talk more one-on-one, -on -one, and it was a great conversation, and by the end of it, we understood each other, he understood where I was coming from. So not a knock to you at all, man. That was, you're the reason this video is happening, it's a good thing, because people need to understand this. So the first thing you guys have to understand is that people seem to have this mindset that if someone's a science-based fitness person, it means they just base everything that they do and believe on based off some random article they read. And that if you're someone who's based off experience, you do everything based off what you've actually tested and tried yourself. Well, here's the problem with that type of thing, guys. First of all, I can pull up an article that says anything, and it literally anything, and that doesn't make it science. Just because you pull up an article that says, oh, this means this, or doing this will cause this, doesn't make it science, especially if it's not true. And understand that with your personal experience, guys, anything that you do, science, is there science is involved why because science isn't just something you choose or not choose science is simply the as far as fitness goes science is the way that we explain what you're doing why what you're doing does what it does and like and how so just think about that when you think about the science there we're looking at the the what the why and the how what are you doing as in like what like, for example, what exercise, what movements are you doing? Why are you doing it the way you do? What benefits come from doing it that way? And then, like, how does it work? For example, it's, it's pretty easy, like, to, to look at the what, where it's like, okay, what's the guy doing? Bench pressing. What's his supposed why? I want a bigger chest. But we need to understand how that all works. It's like, okay, why does bench pressing why does progressive overload on bench pressing, why does that lead to a bigger chest? How does it work? That's all science is, guys. So when people say, oh, I go based on personal experience, well, there's nothing, anything you do in your personal experience, science is there to explain why it works or why it doesn't work or why it may work, but not as efficiently as something else. That's where that's how we can determine what's optimal, guys. Optimal isn't just based off how you feel, like, oh, I feel this is most optimal for me. No, 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 across the board, like for example, if you're a natural, if you're not natural, it doesn't matter because your protein synthesis stays elevated due to the drug run. But if you're a natural, bro splits are not as optimal as upper lower, as push pull, as full body. Any split where you're hitting each muscle group only once a week is not as optimal as a, as any type of split where you're hitting it at least twice a week. That's across the board, period. Now, if you still enjoy bro splits more, because that's what you enjoy from your psychological perspective, that's fine. And science explains why a bro split will still work for building muscle. It just also shows why it doesn't work as well as a type of split where you hit each muscle twice a week because we understand frequency and protein synthesis and that whenever you hit a muscle, the growth only lasts that muscle 24 to 48 hours. So therefore hitting it more than once a week is going to be more optimal. That's a fact across the board. And the reality is, um, even if somebody who doesn't lift or train at all, even if somebody states that, it's still true. 
Because that's another thing. People seem to have this mindset where it's like, well, if this person hasn't done it or tested it for themselves, like, how do we know it's true? And I understand that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these people who thinks you should just listen to every egghead out there who states a bunch of facts, right? Because let's be honest. Let's be honest. Like I've explained in my video where I just talked about how to discern foul and fitness information from BS, which I'll once again have link description down below because I think it's that important. I talk about how information is made valid by the information itself. Information is either true or it is not true, regardless of who it comes from. Meaning, if a overweight individual who's never touched a weight a day in his life tells you that in order to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit, in order to gain weight, you need to be in a caloric surplus, it is true. Him being overweight and never having weight trained in his life does not make it any less true. In the same way that if the most jacked bodybuilder you've ever met tells you that drinking your piss twice a day will put on 20 pounds of muscle on you, guess what? It's not true. It doesn't matter how jacked the dude is. It doesn't matter how much experience he has in the weight room. It's not true. You guys have to understand that. You also have to understand that correlation does not equal causation. Meaning, just because you're doing something and you're seeing a certain result doesn't mean that what you're doing is leading to that result. It could be a number of other things that you're doing instead. Correlation is not causation. Meaning, okay, you're, uh, if, we, if we use, for example, if we do use that, for example, let's say, like, let's say someone's weight training consistently, they're progressively overloading, but they're also for whatever reason they are drinking their piss every morning you can't therefore say oh i'm gaining muscle so drinking my piss must be the reason i'm gaining muscle no that's where the science comes in we can look and see that no the reason you're gaining muscle is because you are weight training consistently and you're progressively overloading you drinking your piss has nothing to do with it and people always want to say oh it's such an extreme example but that's how serious it is guys some of these correlations you guys use you assume oh well so and so said this works or so and so was doing this while he was gaining muscle so that must be why he gained muscle but the science allows us to look and evaluate everything so and so was doing and determine if it really worked or not and that's the problem with a lot of youtube fitness is a lot of it's just hearsay a lot of it is people just saying hey i did this while doing this and it gave me this result but they have no real way of knowing that they have no real way of testing that that's why we have studies and research where we put people in labs under controlled environments to see what works and what actually doesn't work and but what that leads into guys is once again understanding what a meta-analysis is so in short a meta-analysis is basically just when we looked at collective data and research across multiple studies to kind of see what we're, what the collective consensus is from all those studies why well, because you can't just go based off one article one piece of research you've read or just one study why well because some studies aren't performed well some studies are done improperly some studies are done and they where they don't control enough factors for example it's like i can't say i can't have like you know okay we had five dudes um they all you know one dude did full body one dude did bro splits one did do push pull one did push pull legs one did upper lower and like and try to compare the results if we don't know anything about the guys in question how old are these guys do they all have the same amount of weight lifting experience like you know what i'm saying we have to control these factors otherwise we don't know maybe this dude actually ended up lifting more weight just because he's older he's stronger like if, if we have five males but one's 10 years old and the other one's 20 you know what i mean so that's why we that's what a male analysis is for it lets us look through all the collected data because if one research study says oh you don't have to progressively overload in order to put on muscle but the other 49 say that we do well then we understand that something happened with that first research study that was off or that was wrong maybe the person was brand new to weightlifting so they just kept using the same weights for like three weeks which we know you can do that you can grow from the same stimulus um do the biological accommodation for up to about three weeks maybe that person was brand new to weightlifting so they could stick with the same weights and same stuff for three weeks and they were able to make gains off it because they were brand new to it but once again that's not looking at all the factors involved if had we gone longer than three weeks then we would have seen that oh no he does have to progressively overload if he's still trying to get stronger if he's still trying to get bigger so things like that that's kind of the point of what a male analysis is and that's the problem with so many things so many things that people teach and say is based off they read one article or one study and that's what gives science quote unquote a bad name that's why so many people say no i go based off experience not science because so many people think that science is just oh i read this one article and it says this so i believe and that's how it works but no i can find an article that says anything i can find an article that says that sacrificing a unicorn once a year is going to put on 50 pounds of muscle like there's so much garbage out there and that's the thing guys understand that sounding scientific and being scientific is not the same thing i can say a lot of things that sound good that's why so many people don't understand things like how time under tension works right they think time under tension is just like squeezing the muscle and going way slower on your reps instead of understanding that when we're talking about tension it's mechanical tension meaning the amount of load your muscle is 
under and for how long it's under. That's why like, you know, doing the concentric and eccentric part of the motion is more time under tension than just doing the concentric part of the motion because your muscle is moving that load through a further, further range of motion. That's why going through a full range of motion is better than half reps more often than not. Why? Well, because full range of motion, the muscle has to do more work to come from all the way down here at the bottom of the curl all the way up to the top than it does to come from here to here. That's more time under tension because you're moving the weight through a longer range of motion. That's what that refers to. But I could easily just make it seem like, I could make it sound smart and be like, no, man, time under tension just means that, like, you know, like you're going really slow, you squeeze the muscle up here for 10 seconds and you go really slow down because that's more time under tension. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so easy to do that or it's so easy to take things and make and like and take it to an opposite extreme. Like when people talk about the mind and muscle connection, people, I can easily make it sound scientific by saying like, oh, it just means that as you focus on the muscle more, your your muscles respond to your focus on it and it makes it grow more. I could take that and easily make it sound scientific, but really all the mind and muscle connection is means that you are using proper technique. You're using proper form and technique which is going to allow you to feel that muscle the most right okay for example if i'm curling strict right i'm gonna feel that a lot more in my bicep why well, because my form's on point since the strict it's putting more tension on my bicep then if i'm just swinging and jerking right just swinging and jerking then of course you're not gonna see as much benefits why the bicep isn't doing as much work but it had nothing to do with me like focusing on literally focusing on it more it's the fact that i'm focused on my proper form and technique when you use proper form and technique you're gonna feel the muscle work more because proper form and technique that's the whole point of proper form guys one is injury prevention one is usually use proper form it allows us to lift the weight most efficiently as far as like strength but also muscle activation that's the whole point of proper form so people go to all these different extremes about things do and don't work and they try to twist things or they try to sound scientific but it's not the same thing as being scientific so i'm not saying this to tell you guys to just read something and take it as is no think about it we only understand so much a lot of the science research we have comes from experience it comes from having people try things over and over test things over and over putting them in a controlled environment a lot of science that we have wouldn't happen if people never tried anything new so there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with trying something new but it's understanding that if you're trying to do something and you're making statements claiming that hey because i do this it led to this when all the collective research and data shows us that that is not the case then at that point it's not about oh well, i trust my personal experience more than science no you're just using correlations to say that because you're doing this thing that is leading to this when if we actually broke it down and looked at everything you were doing we could explain what all you're doing what does what and what's actually giving you the benefits versus what's not that's what people have to understand and that's kind of what happened with the whole touch and go deadlift thing that like i was explaining to him in short he he basically was saying that because he was doing touch and go deadlifts he feels like it's helped him so much better like with his lockouts and stuff like that and i simply explained that in actuality it takes more strength to do a dead stop deadlift why because you're it's why it's called a deadlift you're pulling from a stagnant position that so you're going to gain more actual strength that way because with touch and go it's more about momentum i explained that as far as muscle recruitment because people try to often say he didn't necessarily people try to often say they're like oh well you're going to get more volume from touch and go so that's going to be like better for hypertrophy but here's the thing your muscles have to work harder pulling that weight from a dead stop and the same way on bench press going pause that's why pause reps are so beneficial for chest growth that when you pause more muscle fiber recruitment is necessary to push it off your chest from a deadlift more muscle fiber recruitment is necessary to pull it from that dead stop so you're going to get all overall more muscle activation so therefore if you're trying to get more volume in it makes sense to just do your normal dead stops then maybe lighten the weight so that you can get more volume in just because that way you're getting the benefits without the risk because that's the problem it's not the fact that touch and go has no benefits as far as it's still a deadlift you're still getting certain benefits but it's the fact that you're not getting any benefits that you wouldn't get from a normal dead stop and the fact is there's way more risk with touch and go like i explained in that last video there's more risk on your lower back you're not probably loading up your glutes and your hamstrings etc and what i explained to him is that since you started doing since you were doing dead stop and then you incorporated touch and go as well the reason that you feel like your lockout got better you probably got stronger just because you're doing overall more deadlift volume had you just thrown in block pulls rack pulls below the knee or just lighten the weight and done more dead stop regards had you added in the same volume you would have gotten the same results more total volume is going to help you get better on a movement regardless of what variation you do of it but it wasn't the touch and go specific part of it that led him to a stronger lockout because that's the thing you guys have to understand and here's a little freebie for this video a lot of you who have problem with the lockouts you want to do things like oh like i can't lock out my bench so i'm gonna do more block press and stuff like that and you get that from equipped and geared lifters you have this mindset that oh since my lockout is weak i need to work on that but you guys have to remember 
the lockout is the easiest part of any lift. The lockout's the easiest part. So if you're struggling with the lockout, it's not because you're weak at the lockout portion, it's because the first half of it, like on bench press, coming off your chest, you're weak. You're so weak and you and you were so slow to buy, by the time you got to the halfway mark or got to lockout point, you had nothing left. So if, if you're having trouble with that, you need to really be doing more paused work, more work from the bottom. Why? Because if you get stronger coming off your chest, then when you get to that point, getting through that will be easy. Whereas if you're just working on the lockout portion with block press, that's great but that's not where your weakest. Your weakest is at the bottom. So even if you get better at that motion, it won't matter because by the time you get off your chest and get to that motion, you have no energy left. Why? Because you spent so much time working on the bottom. But see, a lot of people don't know that. Why? Because we just look at what other people are doing and assume they know what they're talking about based off their build, their strength, whatever. And it's not to say that there aren't certain benefits to things that people do. It's not to say there's no benefits to block press, but that's where the science comes in. Understand why block presses are beneficial. Understand who they're beneficial for and when you should apply them versus when you shouldn't things like that guys so i just wanted to say that i know this course seems like a rant but it really is important trying to help you guys understand that science and your personal experience do not negate each other they go hand in hand they all work together and that's with anything in life guys like it's not like oh screw science i'm just gonna trust my my gut my personal experience anything that you do when you look at it scientifically, we can explain why what you did worked, didn't work, worked better than this, but not as well as this. That's how it works, guys. So understand that. Understand that the point of why we have meta-analysis is because there's so much garbage research out there. There's so many garbage articles and poorly done studies to where if we if, if, if science was that fickle to where it's just based off I read this and you read that, then science would be subjective. It would be completely pointless because it's like, oh, well, he read this article. I read this article. It's both science. So I guess we're both right. No, that's why we look at collective data that's why like I try to explain to you guys I read something every single day read something watch a video listen to a podcast something and then importantly learn how to discern valid fitness information from BS so that way you'll have a better understanding of okay yeah I read this but I know that this goes against the basic founding principles that have never changed as far as fitness so I know it's BS versus okay this is something I've never heard before but it builds upon principles that have already been established so maybe there's something to it let's check it out but yeah I just wanted to explain that guys because I think before I start doing more like in-depth videos with a bunch of research it's important you guys understand that so that you guys aren't in the comments being like oh well I read this or so and so said this because it's not about if you read an article or if someone who's esteemed or smart said something or didn't say something like guess what if a personal trainer a physical therapist or a doctor says something that is invalid it is invalid their credentials does not make the information more valid if someone who's net who has no experience in the gym no certification states something that is a fact it is still a fact they're lack of experience doesn't make it any less true so yeah i'm tired of this whole experience versus science it, it all goes hand in hand guys it doesn't have to be one or the other it all goes together and of course at the end of the day science isn't about being dogmatic science doesn't mean oh never do this but what science does is it allows us to know what your options are so that you can choose from those options but the reality is certain things aren't an option guys certain things don't work no matter how much you may want it to certain things don't work but what's cool about science is it shows us all the things that do work so regardless of what's more or least effective you can pick what you enjoy out of the options of what do work and that's kind of the whole point of putting science with fitness but yeah that's it for this video guys i know it's kind of long but i hope you guys enjoyed it hope it helped you out if you did go ahead and leave a comment down below let me know that it did. <laughs> wow totally messed that up let's do that again hope you guys enjoyed the video <laughs> If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you did not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.